The Alpha Legion has remained one of the most enigmatic Space Marine chapters in Warhammer 40,000, apart from, of course, the two missing legions. Loremasters Online have produced hours of content speculating on the intentions of the Alpha Legion, whether they remain loyalist or are indeed a traitor faction. Recent Black Library books have pulled back the curtain a little on this shady chapter and perhaps outline the future direction for the Alpha Legion. Alpharius, head of the Hydra, provides perhaps some of the best illumination on the Alpha Legion within current lore. Or rather, it better spotlights Alpharius's own nature, belief and moral compass and how those factors have become ingrained within his legion. The book itself is loosely arranged into three distinct parts. The first part outlines what happens after the Emperor finds Alpharius. The second part details how the Alpha Legion came out of the shadows to join the Great Crusade. And the third part depicts how Alpharius found Omegon and why the pair decided to side with Horus. From here on out, this video is going to have substantial spoilers for Alpharius, Head of the Hydra. I would highly recommend that if you have any interest in reading this book, you stop here and return afterwards. Now with that out of the way, it is worth mentioning that author Mike Brooks does a fantastic job weaving a strand of doubt throughout the book. The book is presented as a narrative recollection of Alpharius's own life. However, Alpharis's status as an unreliable narrator is established when it is heavily implied that the Alpharius telling us the story is actually a Megon in disguise. This is achieved as we are told that when Alpharius found a Megan, he spent a great deal of time recounting everything from his eidatic memory, allowing a Megon to serve as the book's narrator in Alpharis's absence. This revelation at the end of the book reframes the entire story, suggesting that where the factual recollection of events digresses into personal anecdotes, we, the audience, can infer that Alpharis' truth is opposite to what Omegon, as Alpharius, presents to us. This sense of opposition is subtly woven into the narrative. Alpharius was the first ever Primarch found and was left on terror, while Omegon was the last found on a pirate ship in the void. Additionally, when the Primarchs uncover knowledge of chaos, Alpharius wants to return to the Emperor while Omegon convinces Alpharius to go to Horus. This reflective duality is further described in the book as the Emperor intended for there to only be one Primarch, and that Alpharius felt that a portion of his soul was missing until he met Omegon. This suggests that whatever the Emperor had planned for the Primarch was ruined when the Chaos Powers cleaved that soul in two. But we'll talk about the nature of Primarch souls in an upcoming video. Where this oppositional duality becomes most significant is when the book's narrator, that being a Megon pretending to be Alpharius, tells us plainly that he, quote, does not like Constantine Valdor very much. This seems slightly strange within the story, as Alpharius, the real one, was instructed by the Emperor to keep himself concealed from Valdor while being free to explore the Imperial Palace. Alpharius seemingly used his time not only to explore the palace and perhaps the dungeon, but also to test the security protocols of Valdor and his custodies. It is only when Alpharius engages in a mock assassination game of the Emperor that Valdor identifies the threat. After a brief battle which is halted by the Emperor, Valdor asks Alpharius to teach him where those security weaknesses lie. This seemingly speaks of some unspoken level of respect between Valdor and Alpharius, something that Valdor doesn't have for many of the other Primarchs. This is also important as Valdor is the third person to know of Alpharius' existence next to the Emperor and Malkador. Having spent so much time alone with Emperor, Malkador and Valdor, Alpharius may have been fully indoctrinated into the Emperor's vision for mankind and the Imperial truth. 
The book's narrator speaks at length of how these ideals were revered and incorporated into the Alpha Legion's tactics during the Great Crusade. The narrator seemingly views his brother Primarchs, such as Russ, Horus, the Lion, etc., as preening fools who let their personal ambitions for glory and recognition get in the way of the overall mission of the Great Crusade. There is pride in the fact that Alpha Legionaries put the mission above all else. As Alpharius was the one to install the tactics and personality into his legion, it is likely that this mission focus is true. However, where Alpharius and Omegon differ is that it seems likely that Alpharius still holds onto and is working towards this greater ambition of the Emperor's vision, while Omegon works towards liberating mankind from the Emperor's tyranny. Neither Primarch see the Emperor himself as infallible, but Alpharis' reverence of the Emperor's vision for humanity seems to reflect Valdor's own views as presented in his Primarch novel. This relationship between Alpharius and Valdor is also apparently deepened in Dan Abnett's Beckwin series. Across the two books currently available, Inquisitor Eisenhorn is attempting to stop some nefarious scheme of the King in Yellow. Beta Beckwin, who believed she was in training to join the Inquisition, only to find out she was in a cognate sleeper cell, happens upon a book she believes contains the identity of the King in Yellow, which, when deciphered, begins with the words Constantine Valdor. Where the Alpha Legion come into play is that one of Eisenhorn's retinue is an Alpha Legionnaire who identifies himself as Alpharius. While I don't believe it to be THE Alpharius, or indeed a Megon, this Legionnaire saves Beckwin's life on more than one occasion and pushes her towards her goal, which is finding the City of Dust. This relationship between Beckwin, the Alpha Legion, and Constantine Valdor is further deepened when it is revealed that Beckwin is a clone created by the King in Yellow for a yet unknown purpose. It seems likely, given Alpharius' skill in developing, training, and maintaining insurgent forces, that he created the Cognate, a kind of shadow inquisition to support Valdor's ambition in creating a new faction of humanity, one which more directly aspires to the utopic tenets of the Imperial Truth, and is more adverse to the current state of the Imperium, one which holds demagogy of Primarchs, Ecclesiasts and Bureaucrats to be absolute. My fan theory on the current state of the Alpha Legion suffers from one major flaw. It presumes that Alpharius is alive and working in tandem with Valdor. We know from the lore both Alpharius and Omegon are dead. Alpharius died to dawn at the onset of the Siege of Terror. Omegon adopted Alpharius' identity after and was shortly killed by Gilliman. However, as Alpharius and Omegon seemingly switch identities whenever it suits them, perhaps it was Omegon disguised as Alpharius who was killed by Dawn, leaving Alpharius disguised as Omegon to reclaim his identity. Additionally, Gilliman could not be sure if the person he killed was his brother. Given that Valdor seems to be in control of Astartes cloning technology and Alpharius had unrestrained access to the Imperial Palace for years, could it be possible that the Alpharius killed by Gilliman was some kind of Primarch clone controlled by Alpharius from afar? While the Primarch is not known for psychic abilities, and why would he tell us if he did have any, he was tutored by Malkador in the realms of mental fortitude. Could it be that Alpharius controls his legionaries like some kind of meat puppets, which also would then blend in well with the Hydra motif? Many heads, one body, a legion of clones, each one capable and willing to be controlled by their master puppeteer, especially if it serves the overall goal of the Alpha Legion. 
while this video has been highly speculative and anything involving the Alpha Legion is, it does portray an exciting future for the Alpha Legion in the wider setting of Warhammer 40k. For me, there has been growing evidence of a schism within the Imperium which threatens to explode and create different factions of humanity all vying for dominance. If the Alpha Legion was to fragment into a loyalist and chaotic legion, while both remaining renegade to the current status quo of the Imperium, that will not only help clarify the role of this fan favourite legion going forward, but will also help drive the plot in the forthcoming years. Between Alpharius Head of the Hydra, the Bequin series, and Constantine Valdor, I genuinely get the impression that the authors at Black Library have been given a directive to plan for the future. I don't believe it's coincidence that this narrative thread exists across the three different books, and I think giving the Alpha Legion 10,000 years in real space to perform their clandestine activities is going to feature very heavily in the setting moving forward. I have been Invictor Lawstrom. Thank you for listening.